how can I set up this interview process? How can I be very intentional with the interview process to find people that already embody these mm-hmm. values? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Melanated Married Millionaires in the Making show. King, where can they go to stay connected with us? Y'all can stay tapped into the show at dm4show.com. That's dm4show.com. And you can follow us on Instagram at dm4show. Now, let's get into the episode. My name is Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game, co-host of the Melanated Mary Millionaires in the making show. And with me, I have my amazing, my logistical, Mm -hmm. my smiling, my Mm -hmm. eyebrow dancing (laughs) queen herself. Please introduce yourself. What is up, everybody? My name is Sinclair, a.k.a. B. Health Nerd. And yes, I am director of operations and logistics as well for our business. So. Mm Uh, I think today's episode is super important uh, for all aspects, but especially I think for everything that I see on the back end too. We did not start off with the code of conduct. Mm -hmm. We hired people before we had a code of conduct in place. We created this out of a need. Mm. So please learn from our mistakes and realize that this is a very important part of your business once you start to grow your team. Um, So number one is because it sets and documents the expectations, Mm. which we've already talked a little bit about, but... You, you, talked to, you talked earlier about how you just assumed that the, higher, you know, the, the people that we're hiring are mm. going to uh, uphold what you expect as an employee because right. you have yeah. those values, right? Mm. But I literally wrote here, it's funny you said that, you cannot assume <laughs> your team knows how to be a good representation of your organization. Mm-hmm. Every company is different, right? Uh, an employee at McDonald's is going to conduct themselves probably differently than an employee at Chick-fil-A, sure. right? Because Chick-fil-A invests and expects mm-hmm. a level of, of a customer service, right? So they put that training in there. They hire people that have that type of energy. Right. So whatever you set as the expectation is what you are going to uh, get in return. Yep. Um, it also serves as an agreement between the employer and the employee. Number two it helps you identify good potential employees or potential mm. candidates, right? If you know, once you get them into the organization, this is what you're going to be expecting of them. Mm. You don't want that to have to be a big shift and change to who they already are. Mm, that's good. Right? You don't want them to have to change everything about themselves to match this uh, you know, list of expectations. You mm. want it to be part of who they already are. Mm-hmm. So once you have that list of expectations, you can now start being targeting, target, uh, targeted mm-hmm. with the questions that you're asking in the interview, right? And be looking for little red flags. Like yeah. if, right, if you want, to, want a person to be very team oriented, when you ask them about their strengths and weaknesses, if they talk about like, ah, you know, I don't really do well with teams and I always just like to be by myself and you know, that's nope. great. That's probably good for another type of industry or another type of organization, not but not for us, yeah. right? Um, so those are, again, allows you to really look for like, how can I set up this interview process? How can I be very intentional with the interview process to find people that already embody these mm-hmm. values? That is a excellent point, Queen, on filtering the interview process. Mm-hmm. I think our first interview process, we didn't have a code of conduct. We didn't have a clear roles and expectations. So we were just hiring off of really vibe mm-hmm. and availability, right? If, if you've you got a good vibe and you're available to come, come through, play Black Wall Street, we'll hire you. But now, second round of things, we were able to get really more specific on timeliness. Yes. Are they smiling in the interview? What kind of vibe are we getting? Are they educated or do they have, not are they educated, but are they uh, educated on financial literacy? Have they been a tutor before? Have they worked in summer camps before? Get really more specific on the type of people. But then on the flip side of that, once you get someone who truly embodies these things naturally and there's a couple people on the team that i'm just like yes they are play black wall street through and through you now can like take those people and you know i want to help them promote Mm -hmm. through the company and stay because their value their code of conduct and their culture is perfectly aligned so we want to continue to grow with those people and there's been other folks to where they join the team it's clear that who they are is not in alignment and it takes either a lot of effort for them to try to get in alignment or they never get into alignment because it's just in their bones. And it's like, okay, well, this is a person that will not be welcome to join the team again in the future, Mm -hmm. right? So it makes it real easy to make those decisions. Yes, yes. Um, 
Anything else to add on number two? No queen. We flying through, come on now. Phew. Number three, it helps you hold your employees accountable. For sure. This is a great segue because we just talked about like what happens when you have somebody that's not upholding that agreement, right? So one, the fact that it's documented, you have a clear outline and agreement of this is what I expect and the, the, the team member signs, signs it. It mm -hmm. also makes it very clear when that agreement has been broken. Mm -hmm. So, right, you now feel comfortable saying, hey, we've, we're not meeting up to this code of conduct, right? You mm -hmm. can put it in writing. Um, I do have, you know, in my background, I did, uh, I was a manager over, uh, you know, 30 or so people. So mm -hmm. I did work heavily with HR and kind of like anytime someone, you needed to mm -hmm. reprimand someone, you have to have it clearly documented, yeah. right? On what is the expectation? What did they not do? When did they not do it, right? Dates, times, you want everything documented because if you ever do get to the point where you may need to let somebody go, you want to have it clearly documented. Right. This is what the expectations we set that they agreed to. And on these dates and times, this agreement was not upheld, right? This is where you broke that agreement. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, of course, we're not jumping straight to letting anybody go, but you can start that process of maybe... Depends on what you did. Right, that's true, that's true. I um, mean, you know, a written written warning uh, or a verbal warning, whatever it's going to be, but you can then outline what your uh, accountability process is going to be as at a company. But you yeah. can't really hold people accountable if you never set the expectation of what they should and shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very tough firing people or not renewing people, right? But... This is a unfortunate reality of being a business owner, being a boss, being a uh, entrepreneur. Yes, you get the privilege of hiring people. You get the privilege of providing value. But at the same time, you need to make difficult decisions to sometimes let people go or not promote people. So just prepare yourself for that, right? You're, you're a boss, you're an entrepreneur, you are a millionaire in the making, and it's gonna come with some tough decisions. Yeah, yeah. So I think, again, code of conduct is the step number one. This is you outlining, this is what we expect from employees. Step number two is the accountability piece, which is also important. You don't wanna have to be reactive in the moment when something doesn't go right and figuring mm. out, how am I gonna fix this? You wanna have that process outlined. So again, learn from our mistakes, get that code <laughs> of conduct, step number one. Step number two, what happens when someone does not uphold that code of conduct? Nice. Um, now, number four. This, uh, the code of conduct creates company culture and upholds company morale as mm -hmm. well. And so I think this part is underrated, but very important. Okay. Let's say you have somebody who is not holding up the code of conduct. They're showing up late. Mm -hmm. They're uh, not you know, dressed appropriately. They're not showing up at all. Mm -hmm. That is going to affect other team members, right? Sure. Because now we've got two people that are supposed to show up here. If only one person is showing up, now this other person that's supposed to have another person supporting them is doing the session by themselves, mm -hmm. right? They start to lose trust in that partner. They start to, uh, it just adds more stress onto the scenario. So now their morale may start to be a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. man, I used to like working, working here, <laughs> but you know, my partner, they're not reliable, et cetera. And I think it does start to affect the entire team. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really important for you to, again, outline what's expected. And it's also then becomes your responsibility to hold people accountable for when that's not being upheld because right. otherwise people start to get the sense of, hmm, well, I, I can do whatever I want then, right? Because yeah. nothing will happen. And then that starts to spread. And I, I think we've seen that in so many scenarios. I've seen that in other workplaces where if people don't hold people accountable, it just creates mayhem in mm -hmm. the company culture and people don't want to, don't like to come to work anymore. Right. And we never want to have that type of environment. So I think it is important to make sure that you are, you are taking that step. Because when a, when a team member does not, again, uphold that code of conduct, it does affect the morale of the entire team. For sure. And I think that's where we initially started using the code of conduct. because We saw a pattern of mm -hmm. certain folks not showing up on time, certain folks wearing whatever they wanted. And we were getting complaints from our customers, from our, our principals, um, right, rightfully so. And then we had a, a, a little heart to heart with, mm -hmm. with the entire team. And we were like, hey, this is what we're hearing. This is the experiences. This is our new code of conduct. This is the code of excellence that we expect from you all. We pay very well, right? We pay significantly over minimum wage. Uh, we do a lot of like small things that show our love and our value for our team. And 
with that, we expect that to be reciprocated, mm -hmm. right? Because we're going above and beyond as employers, we expect you all to either go above and beyond as team members or at least meet this minimum right. of excellence with the team. And we had this this meeting and I, I went in a little bit. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know if I went in a little, little too much. I got, I got on my soapbox and I really went in on uh, our team just from a passionate standpoint. Right. Like we're here to create impact. We're here for a very specific mission vision and we are hiring you all to be in alignment with that mission if you can't get on board if you can't be at this level this is not going to be the company for you and i think after that hard conversation and confronting it we saw a shift in yes. the culture yes. then we had people sign the code of conduct and it's been very solid and consistent since that point um so again i think sometimes you do as a leader of the company need to hold that responsibility of the culture and not be afraid of confrontation when people are against the company culture. I think it's also important to be intentional about when you roll out the code of excellence and create for us an experience mm -hmm. around building the culture. Um, so you can do this through a company retreat, right? I think we started doing this with just me and the queen having company retreats for Play Black Wall Street for the M4 show so that we can be just uh, fully immersed in the brand, in the culture, go through our mission, vision, core values, code of excellence, critical actions, and just be surrounded by the culture and then walk in it. Yes. And we were able to have that experience with our Play Black Wall Street team. Yep. So we took them, paid for it, flew them out to, to Tulsa, stayed in the hotel. We were there for three days. Yes. Three days, each day we talk about the mission. Each day we talk about our customer. Each day we talked about critical actions. Each day we're talking about our code of excellence. And by the end of the experience, they're now walking away with, I'm in Play Black Wall Street now. Yes. Right? I've been, I don't want to say indoctrinated because I feel like that has a negative, yeah. negative spin to it. But I've been exposed to the culture of Play Black Wall Street. I now clearly know the expectations, but also they saw our commitment, our investment to them as employees right to being willing to even create that experience create that environment have one-on-one -on -one conversations group conversations dinner it was just a great way of creating a culture so highly recommend y'all have some type of business retreat virtually or in person <clears throat> that allows them to learn these things about your company yes i mean we definitely have invested time and energy and money into that uh, retreat or that training process because we do see the value in it mm -hmm. and we want people to be bought into our mission our vision and not just want to collect a check right mm -hmm. and so I mean we've had people say like this is the best job I've ever had before they even actually go to a site <laughs> and start yeah. teaching and that like really warmed our hearts because it's, it shows that what we're doing is working mm -hmm. um, so yeah very I think it, this is so you don't think about how important this is until you see the need for it, for sure. but you know, again, you know, take take our word for it. it. It's definitely needed. Invest that time and energy to pour into your employees, set the expectations. Um, yeah, I think it it goes a long way because once you have people in your on your team that are really bought in to mm. the the mission and vision of your company, it 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 pours out into other things, right? Mm -hmm. Them going to the schools. Now that, that, you know, that principle was like, wow, this is great. We want to have y'all back next, next, mm -hmm. uh, uh, next year. And that principle is going to tell another principal when they meet up for lunch. And now we have other people reaching out to yep. us. And, you know, we've had our, our team members, you know, randomly reaching out to us like, Hey, I, I just met this person. I talked about our organization. Like you should connect with them. And yep. like, we never said they had to do that. We never said like, please go out and they're not sales representatives at any, in any mm -hmm. uh, way, shape or form. But the fact that they're willing to do that shows that like, wow, they truly believe in what we do mm -hmm. and they want to see us win and, sure. and us meaning the whole team. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it definitely is, is a worthwhile investment. For sure. And if you're watching and you also believe in what we do, you also want to support what you can do is what Sinclair? Like and subscribe. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Make sure y'all subscribe to the M4 show on YouTube. And if you're listening to this on any type of audio or podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, all those things, make sure y'all also follow. That way more people can get this message and get this value. 
we appreciate you, all right? Make sure y'all secure the marriage. Make sure y'all secure the bag. And of course, make sure y'all secure the bag two times. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Come on, this is a bag, 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 bag. Peace. <laughs>